very warm weather. Yeah, as we walk through the the garden of Upper Hamlet, we see the flowers are uh, about to bloom. There's so many buds. Uh, it's so warm in January. We hope that uh, our warm welcome also help you to bloom this week. Because uh, the last two weeks, uh, the holiday retreat, we have many people. Um, when they came, they came with a lot of stress, a lot of difficulties, pain. But amazingly, just uh, after one week, they are able to smile. And they go home with a renewed aspiration. So talking about aspiration, may I ask, do you still remember your resolution, your New Year resolution by now? Or do we have any? <laughs> Very few of us can achieve what we set out for the new year by the end of the year. And so when, um, when we have the ceremony at midnight to welcome the new year, we burn our prayer, and we also have a resolution. We burn them also, so that we can send our aspiration into the universe, and so that we ask to have all the favorable conditions and support that we need in order to realize our um, aspiration for the whole year. But by the time the new year pass, the celebration pass, the resolution is also evaporate. Um, not so many of us can really, really um, do what we like to do for the new year. And do you ever wonder why we cannot do this? Every year we set out for the new resolution. Either we forget or we procrastinate. It's because we don't really know where we are. And where to begin. In Asia, we have a very um, traditional way of um, and our year. So if we have any debt or any unresolved business uh, in order to welcome the new year, we used to settle these matters before we welcome the new year. And so that's how we remember exactly how much we owe money to other people or how things that we, uh, we are unsettled. by our conflict or by our differences so that we can um, find ways to, to settle. And that's how we remember. But not so much nowadays. Now you don't need to borrow money from other people. You can go to the bank. And, and so we guess, uh, gradually we lose this tradition. But anything that help us to remember, or to try, or to um, grow, it needs food. And so today we can explore the teaching of the Buddha about four different kinds of nutrients that we can sustain ourselves. Um, this is a sutra we call the Discourse on the Four Kinds of Nutriment. It's in the Samyutta Nikaya, both in Bali and can canon and Chinese canon. It's a sutra 373. We have it in our chanting book. So the first kind of nutriment is the edible food. So the Buddha gave a very good example of a couple 
who went through the descent. And because it's, it's a very uh, um, strenuous and arduous journey, somehow they run out of their food before they arrive at the destination. And so they have to think of how to survive all together. So the Buddha used the example of a couple who went through the desert with their son. And so in the middle of the journey, they run out of food, provision. So they have to think of how to survive. And as you know, in the desert, there's, not, there's nothing to eat. And so they have to kill their son in order to eat to sustain themselves because they thought that um, it's very painful to eat your own son's flesh. But in order to survive, they have to. So you can imagine how painful it felt to eat your son's flesh. I don't think any one of us want to be in that situation. And so this is the first example of the edible food, the, thing, the food that we digest every day. Um, nowadays, even though we have war right now in Europe, we still have enough to eat. It's not like food is so scarce and we cannot have food. We do have food to eat. But this, um, this teaching is to help us to be aware of what we are eating because we don't want to eat all the provisions of our children or grandchildren if we consume unmindfully, if we eat unmindfully. It's a new year, it's an occasion for us to celebrate, and that's how we consume. Drinking, uh, eating. I think this sutra is very good for the, for the health retreat, when we have health retreat, hopefully this year again. Because of the pandemic, we, uh, we could not have it. What I really want to share about this is another kind of food. That is also very necessary, it's also very um, important for our uh, growth, for our uh, development. Some people, when they came for the holiday retreat, they said that um, Coming to the monastery is like uh, dipping ourselves in the dye. You know, like you have fabric, and you want to dye them, you have to dip them in the in the pond or in the pot with the dyed color, so that they came out will have a new color. So many friends express their their desire to come in order to um, to renew. Um, to feel inspired again. And so the kind of food I like to talk about today is um, spiritual food. We, we have food to eat every day, but there's something lacking in our, um, 
in our life. That's how, that's how we, we choose to come here. And as I said at the beginning, we hope that with our warm welcome, with our um, collective energy of mindfulness, with our practice that we generate together, we can offer you this kind of food. The monastic community, the way we live and the way we function is a family. It's like, like your own family. So we have siblings, we have elders, we have teacher, we have youngers, brothers, sisters. And so the way we function is that we follow, um, for we follow the schedule and we shoulder the, resp we shoulder the responsibility together. And so in that spirit, when we work, we live, we practice, and we play together, we bond. And then from that bonding, we developed uh, friendship, we developed um, um, emotional um, support, because we know that each one of us, we need that kind of emotional support when we are in difficult situation. And so through, by living together, we generate this, this energy of togetherness, but at the same time, uh, very bonding. And so like the last uh, two weeks when we have many people, the work, the, 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 the load of work is a bit more. And so we share, we really share the responsibility. Um, and in that way, we really learn how to support, how to understand, and how to um, be together. Because if we don't, we don't build this kind of friendship and bonding in our daily life, then we are lacking a kind of food. And we, are, we can be very hungry in the Sangha. We can have three meals a day, but we are very hungry. Because we cannot connect, we cannot, um, we cannot share the responsibility with others. Because we think of our, our need, our need is not met yet. And so we are struggling to meet our needs. And in that way, we're not able to share the responsibility with others. And it becomes uh, a little bit burden for some others when they have to carry the load. So when you come, even though just for one week, you are able to enjoy the flow of the Sangha. With the schedule, we learn to flow with the Sangha. Uh, yesterday, we have working meditation. Many of you help us to collect all the branches that we trim in the garden. Working is a way to help us to channel our energy. Because mentally, if we have a lot of energy in our mind, and we don't know how physically to exercise or to use our energy, we will end up thinking a lot. And with the thinking, we go around and around and around in circle. The more we think, the more we feel very tired. We just have no energy just to think. We don't even need to work yet. We just think about the work and then we feel very tired already. And so in that way, we're not able to connect to the pool of, of, the pool of energy in the Sangha. Because when we work together, um, it can be very joyful. This is the time how we learn about our, our sisters, our friends, and, our and their difficulties so that we can support them. I have been in the Sangha for quite a while. And I really know, I really treasure this, this kind of food, spiritual food, because without it, I cannot grow. Many of us, when we came, we came with a very heavy heart. 
with a lot of pain because of, because of a very broken relationship in the family. We have people share that they thought of Christmas is a family time, that family can come together. But it turned out uh, it's not as they want, it's not what they wish. It's a lot of argument, a lot of anger, and a lot of frustration. And so even, even though it's a family together time, but it turned out it's a disaster because one member of the family uh, got so angry and, and he threw blades and bolts during the meal. And it, it's very, very, um, it's very damaging. And so, and so this family, they thought that next year they would not like to have a, a family gathering in the house. Maybe they will go to the restaurant so it will be safer because in the, in the restaurant, somehow we need to learn how to uh, control ourselves in public and not as in the house. You know, in the house, if we don't like, we can throw you know, freely. And we have many people share, you know, a lot of pressure and a lot of stress in their body and mind. By the end of the year, they need to finish their work um, family obligation, responsibility. So they have three meals a day, but they are very hungry. It's just like some of us in the Sangha, we're also very hungry. So they come because they feel that they need something that emotionally they can lean on, they can depend on. And as a Sangha, we practice, we generate this collective energy. The sisters in Lower Hamlet, they hosted beautifully Christmas Eve. This year they don't have many sisters, but they pull together, they work together, and they, they offer us such a beautiful evening. We feel so warmed and so, so loved. You know, when we at our New Year's, um, Christmas Eve dinner, in Lower Hamlet. Eating that meal, I know that there's a lot of work. And as, as you come and you join us, we offer you this kind of food, not only the edible food that we eat, but we also offer you the spiritual food so that it can ease the pain and the discomfort in the body and mind. Same thing with Upper Hamlet. The brothers, they are also very few, but they offer us such a wonderful New Year's Eve reception. So one, when one brother cook in the kitchen, he needs many other brothers and friends to help him. He cannot cook by himself. And if we let him cook by himself, there's something in us saying that we're not really, really helping our brothers. So, as you know, when we look at the children, the new year, we have children also come with their parents. Um, the last two previous years, we could not receive people because of the pandemic. It's only last year we receive, we slowly open up, we receive only maybe 20 people. Last Christmas, we opened and we receive only 20 women in New Hamlet. But this year, we are able to open and receive so many friends. And they come with children. And when the children come, and you look at them, you really see they depend on their parents. They have three meals a day. But they need more than that three meals a day. They need a lot of love from their parents. And when they come here, they also have the collective energy of the Sangha. And that's how they feel very happy. So one father, he said, I'm so happy that my sons are very happy here. When I hear him, when I heard him sharing that, I, I, I think maybe the parents, they are very stressful because they look very tired. And so they're not able to 
to be, to be present for their son all the time. And so, but coming here, they don't have to worry about all the things so they can be with their sons and play with them. And so their sons are very happy. The children, they are very happy. And we really see, even though we are grown up, but we still need that kind of food. It's not that we only need three, three meals a day, that's enough. Without connection, without bonding, we are very dry and isolate ourselves. So we hope that for one week in Plum Village, you are able to relax, uh, refresh, renew, rejuvenate yourself. So we learn to take care of ourselves. We learn to generate love for ourselves. So when we go home, we can be a support for our family members. We can provide them that kind of food. The second kind of food is uh, sense impression. That means our, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our tongue, and our body. And so we, we have contact through our senses. And again, the Buddha used a very, uh, very strong image um, Example of a, of a cow being skinned. And so without its skin, it exposed itself to all kinds of insects and flies. And so they can easily attack him and eat him. And so the Buddha said, you know, with our senses, if we are not guarding our senses, we are like a cow with our skin also. Anything can go through our senses and stir up our consciousness, our whole being. Um, like I said, when, when, when friends arrive for the weekend, for the holiday retreat, most of them are very tired, exhausted at the end of the year. Um, and so this is a really good example. This is a really good time to have us to look into um, the second kind of food so that we can guard ourselves better, we can protect ourselves better in this, this year. In, in New Hamlet's office, we have a few computers. When I first arrived in New Hamlet, I thought, well, 60 nuns with three computers to use won't be enough. But after a while, I observe, and they say, seems like nobody uses them. 60 of us, but very few of us would use these three computers. So one day I, I, I need to print out the homework for the English class. I went into the office and I printed the homework. And um, it just to lock in, I need more than three minutes to lock in. It is super slow. <laughs> you cannot do anything. You just sit there and you just breathe. I feel itchy you know, in my body. <laughs> because it's so slow. <laughs> and by the time I'm able to print the, work, the, the homework, it took me more than 30 minutes just to print the homework. 
And so the second time I think of going to that office, I have to think it again. Um, so this is something that we are discussing. Uh, we want to have a better internet connection so it can be faster. But then many uh, opinions raise that, um, well, when they are slow like that, they help us to practice. <laughs> and so by the, th by the evening, when we finished our sitting meditation, uh, we came back to our room. And I, I hear the, the voice and the laughter of the sisters upstairs. Um, so 8 or 8.30 in the evening. It's, it's, it's like birds going back to their nest at the end of the day. You know, they just chick 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 for a few minutes, and then it's quiet down. And it's a noble silent time, so they quiet down. And when I listen to their voice and their laughter, I see that they, they're not going to the office and using the computer or going to inter get on the internet. And so they bond. Every, every, every night, when they go, after the sitting, they go back, they talk about their day, their work, and about tomorrow, and the retreat, what is coming. Um, so in, in a way, the way they talk and the way they share, they bond together. And then, then when they sleep, the next morning I see them, they look so fresh. Because the way we live our life, we are very careful of what we are exposing our senses especially the internet. We need the internet. Without the internet, we cannot have retreat. <laughs> yeah, we really need the internet. But we limit our use of internet so that we can bond and we can connect with another. The way we, um, the way we consume, the way we use the internet, um, especially the games, video games, or the, we don't call it, you know, games or, or apps that has been devised for the phone. They know how to hook us. And we can easily spend hours and hours on our electronic devices. How do we know? You think we play? <laughs> um, people share with us when they come to the retreat, they share with us. Because they talk about their addictions. And what we consume through our senses is not only addiction, but intensity. What has been, what has been designed uh, for, for, for apps and for, for phone or for computer, it's have the function is to be faster, faster, and faster. Right? So if you have the new phone, it's very fast. And so this is a really, really the difficulties of our time. The suffering of our time is stress, intensity, addiction. Because when we, when we are hooked on these electronic devices, we lose our patience. We don't know what is patient. Because the way it's designed is to be fast. Faster, faster, and faster, and faster. So we lose touch with our patient. And we don't have that patient to wait. So in the New Year's Eve, we have the Dharma talk about acceptance. We learn how to accept ourselves. And one of the main ingredients is patience. So we need to check with ourselves, do we have this patience through our consumption, through our ways of using internet and electronic devices? You know, the culture that we are in right now is the culture of violence, of guns, of war, of conflict, of discrimination. Can you imagine a six years old boy, very unhappy in a class, can shoot his teacher? But 
that is happening in the US. And the teachers in, in critical condition, it's really life-threatening situation. And we wonder how come a six years old know how to use a handgun and where he get it. And so the news and the media, the newspapers, movies, internet, that's how we expose ourselves every day. And what do we get? Oh, I don't want to talk so negatively about internet because we, internet is, is really, really helpful for our, our way of life. We depend on internet a lot for many things. But we really, really have to be very, very conscious, very aware of our usage of internet. Otherwise, we would not have any personal time. And we, the way we consume through our senses, we bring in a lot of toxins and a lot of um, habits of how to choose and how to select. So in the monastery, we have, um, we have the practice of noble silence in the evening around 9.30. That means that we will not talk. We will enter silence period until the next morning. And so we prepare our mind and body we allow our mind and body to rest and not expose our senses. If we use internet until two in the morning, then, then we go to bed. We cannot sleep right away. It will take some hours, it will take time for us to wind it down and to sleep. And we have many young people who come and share that they have sleeping disorder problem. They stay up late, they get up late, and from sleeping disorder, they have eating disorder. And so a person, a young person in their late 20s, they have sleeping disorder, they have sleeping eating disorder, and they came and they say, they want, I want to go back normal, like when I was in my teen. I go to bed around 11, I can get up at around 7, I can, eat, I can have three meals a day without problem, with digestion, but they cannot. And that's how when you come here, we encourage you not to use internet, if you can turn off your phone for one week. And just allow your senses to be calm, to be in nature, to be in our body. That's how tired our eyes are, how tired our bodies are, our shoulders, our arms, our legs. But coming here, spending one week, what we exposed to is the normal pace of life, which is not too fast. We have schedule for us to follow. We have meals to take. We have shower to take. We have exercise time. And we have sitting meditation. And these time for us to, to not to receive from outside, but instead to go back inside. And so that we can get in touch with that seeds of patience in us. If we don't know how to be patient with ourselves, we cannot be patient with our family members. And that's how we have a lot of fighting. <coughs> many, many, many people share of, of Christmas holiday, of family time, that they suffer a lot.
but coming here, they feel that they can be themselves. They can express themselves, and they can be hurt. People listen to them. So I hope that for one week being here, um, you can be more aware of more, be more aware of your senses when you are when your eyes in contact with the object of your eyes, and it will have an eye consciousness, and it will go into our consciousness. And what we have contact here, it helps us to get in touch with ourselves and not to pull us away from ourselves. And that's how you have a sense of relaxation. Sometime I need to go to the market to do shopping for the Sangha. Or somebody asked me to stop by and get something. And if I spend, like, it's especially in the supermarket, in the big market, I used to have a kind of light headache after an hour going around the aisles with all the merchandise. Because there's so many colors, products, choices to make. And, and usually we will end up buying more than what we need, <laughs> especially it's on sale. <laughs> but in the monastery, you know, our senses are very, very protected. So I hope that um, you learn this new habit of resting your eyes, aware of your ears when you hear the sounds of the birds singing. Many people say that, you know, when they live in the big city, their senses are very dulled. But when they come to the monastery, because it's in the countryside, so they feel that their senses is getting better. It's it heightened their senses. You know, because of the fresh air, of the quietness, the silence, the sounds of the rain. These things help us to touch with what is inside of us. And that's how the way we live and to, to water the seeds of patience. And you know, patience has its power. The power to cut through our arrogance and our ingratitude. Without patience, we will take things for granted. Everything has to be like that. It should be like that. The third kind of nutriment is our volition. When we look at um, the second kind of food that we just mentioned, the sense edible, I mean the sense impression, it stimulate. It stimulate us. And so we have this kind of volition. The volition is kind of a determination, the will to do something for our life or for the life of the people we love.
volition, it can be a very uh, big source of energy. It can motivate us. It can um, propel us on the path if we have the right kind of volition. Um, last Thursday, we have the panel sharing. The, we share with you the teaching of Thay about the end of our civilization. Now, what practice we can do, can bring home for our daily life. Mm. Your civilization is like a human life, human span. It, it, it gives birth to a civilization and will end a civilization. We have many civilizations on earth before our own civilization. And so when it's time to come, it will end. Mm. When we know, you know, also with the, with the media, with the news, more and more we have awareness of global warming because of calamities, because of natural disasters the past year we really see how global warming affects our life. All lives on Earth, not just our life, but all lives on Earth. And so we cannot help to wonder, what can we do? But then, you know, with the busyness of the daily life, the job, the responsibility, the obligation, it carries us away. Oh, and then global warming, the politician, they will take care of it. Or the government will take care of it. And so it's out of our hands again and again and again. But we also have a, a movement of many young people who are very aware of the global warming. And more and more young activists engage in this kind of work. And we really see that it's not just a handful of people who can, who can change this direction of our human family. We need a lot of awakening, collective awakening. Because, you know, as human, we have this tendency of inertia. If something flooding, in Asia or in Africa, it's not in Europe. So it's not affecting us. So we have this tendency to think that it's somewhere else. It's not here. But more and more, we have more awareness that it's really affecting all, us all. But then we need to have this awareness to keep it alive. And otherwise, the daily busyness of our life will carry us away again. And the faith of the earth will be dealt with by somebody. And so um, uh, the last two weeks, we have, um, we have the transmission of the five trainings. Surprisingly, many friends, when they come for the first time, first time they heard about the five trainings, and then we have the presentation, we have the Dharma sharing. We will share about the experience of using the trainings as a compass to guide their life. And they see how they change their life, how they give them hope, how they inspire them to continue. Even though with a lot of um, stress, a lot of suffering, but they know that they have the direction. And so this, this volition, it's a, a volition that we really, really want to have a direction. We have, to, uh, we have something that we can take home and then we can work together and so that we can generate this collective awareness. And I find that the five mindfulness trainings are something very concrete to help us um, to navigate our life, to help us to center ourselves, to help us to find a balance that we need 
in our, in our life, in our family life, and professional life. We call it trainings because it is a training. It's a, you, as you read through the trainings, you see many, many, um, many jewels in it because it's come from the experiences of, of many generations of practitioners. And we are updating, we are renewing them with time. And so it is very concrete guideline to help us to navigate ourselves in our times of confusion and desperation. Mm, because it is a training, we may not be able to do it uh, right away. Everything is said in the training. But can, we can pick out one thing in the training that help us to have a kind of um, a point to focus. When we are able to do one thing, then when we can, we can take another line from the training and to extend our practice. So in that way, we are able to, um, to live our life with more mindfulness, with more intention, uh, with more patience, and with more aspiration. Because each individual, if we are able to be awake, to be aware of the situation of our life and of the life of other people, then we can have a common goal, a common purpose. Because the global warming, it's, it's the issue is so vast and so complex. And it's not that easy to to deal with, with just a few governments of a few countries. But it's really, really need the awareness and the, uh, the determination of each individual on Earth to reverse this process. Mm. We used to have Christmas celebration, and we have the gift exchange. And so this year, we move another step further we will not do these gifts exchange anymore. We're not going to buy and con consume these, these uh, things in order to, to bring more awareness um, to the community and to the people who come with us. It used to be a very um, um, bustling and joyful energy atmosphere of Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve. But this year, um, it's a bit different. But the energy is also very serene, very peaceful. And so, gift is something that, you know, it can make us feel excited for that moment. But then it will pass very quickly. But this year, when we don't have any gift to exchange, then we have more time to be together and less time to prepare. <laughs> because we don't, we don't need to wrap any gifts or to hurry to go to the market to get the, to buy them. So we, 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 we cut down quite many things. Time, energy, money. <laughs> and what do we have in return? We have more peace. We have more calmness and serenity, which is very nice. And so as a monastic community, we are living with this awareness, um, the way we consume, our choice of making decisions. It will help us to, uh, to, to have less impact on the earth. And we really hope that we can be an example um, so that you can really see that we can, we can live this kind of life. Many people share when they come and they see us live, how we live our life. We open our center, we welcome you, and you come and you, you live with us for a week, a month, or a year, and you see us, how we live our life. And many people, when they go home, they say they, they can live this kind of life, which makes us very happy. Because we can share this awareness with you and then when you go home, you can share this awareness with many other people also. We need this kind of collective awareness and awakening 
in order to have a big impact on our environment. And this is a kind of volition. It is a kind of New Year resolution, but this is really, really concrete. So instead of having a New Year resolution of um, losing five pounds or three kilos, we can practice the fifth training, mindful consumption, which is very concrete. And it's helped us to, to stick to it and not to get lost and off track. So uh, the five mindfulness training is something that, that is very, very, very concrete, very, very valuable for us to take home. You don't have to receive them formally. You can ask for a copy and you can take home and then you can work with it to see which one it resonates with you the most. And then you can work on it and to see by the end of this year, can you achieve what you aspire to do with the guideline of the five mindfulness trainings? It improves. So when we have a, a, a volition, individ, individual volition, it will come up, it will add up as a collective volition. And this is, the, this is something that we really, really need to generate in order to change the, the global warming effect that we are having now. Right like now, January is very warm. <laughs> Super warm. Or in summer, we can have 45 degrees. We are roasting in the sun. It's more and more, it's affecting our life. It's not something abstract and somewhere else, and it's not here. This volition, we really, really need this volition. kind of food is our consciousness. The Buddha thought of, of the last kind of food, the class type nutriment is uh, the food of consciousness is in terms of retribution. Look at our physical body with our five scanners, our physical body, our feelings, our perceptions, our mental formations, and our consciousness. And look at the environment we are in. That is our retribution. And as we learn about the second kind of food, the, the sense impression, what the impact they have on our consciousness, we can really see the way we consume um, unmindfully. And that's how we have this retribution. Why do we find ourselves here in Plum Village? Probably you need to find a different environment, the better environment for you to heal, to grow, to renew. And there's some kinds of retribution that we uh, ended up here in Plum Village. And what is the consciousness of this place? Many people share when they come here, they feel that they are not being judged. They can, they can relax, they can let, let down their guard and be who they are. And so this is a culture, a, a plum village. This is something our teacher shared beautifully in his teaching of being, be yourself, be beautiful. And this is how we collect, how we generate this, this environment this retribution is for us and for you to come with the, the, um, the stress that the bodies have to endure, the mental afflictions that the, the mind have to uh, cope with, 
um, the pollution, the noise. There's many, many other factors that this created the mental illness. The isolation, the depression, unmindful consumption. They are the factor that we have this kind of mental illness. And the environment we are in at home or at work is not the best, it's not the, the one that we desire because it's not helping us to cope with or to deal with. That's how we choose to come here. It's in a different environment where we can find ourselves. And so in this, in this environment, um, we learn to slow down. We learn to be. We learn to relax. We learn to exist mindfully. <laughs> This is very, very, um, um, the environment is have to be wholesome for us to, to realize our potential. And that's how our teacher, he, he said, you want your child to develop, to grow beautifully, you have to choose the environment for them and put them into good environment. Then you don't need to worry a lot because they will naturally develop and they will grow. So our environment is something that we really, really need to, um, to be aware of. Why more and more people, they choose to come to the monast Buddhist monastery during Christmas and New Year? Because it is very safe. and we can be who we are. So if we practice the, these four kinds of nutrients, then you can really see they enter uh, the second nutriment, um, the, four, um, the, the, the sense impression, it has a big impact on our retribution in our body, in our environment. And so when we look at our physical body right now and the environment we are right now, we can really, really see what did we live? How did we live? And what impact they have on us? And so that we can have a better choice for our future. Another thing is about the collective consciousness is out there in society, the collective consciousness is to consume, to discriminate, the way we live our life, we change the climate. The way we consumed, we deplete the natural resources. The way we discriminate people who are different than us, we create war. That is the environment we have. That's how we have, I wrote a book, the, the world we are. Not the world we have, but the world we are. We are the world, we are the environment. So living out there in society, the collective energy, the collective consciousness, not allow us to live with our own consciousness. We have to be like other people. We cannot live with our own consciousness, which is to be yourself, be beautiful. So we're living out there in that context, in that um, collective consciousness, we have a set of things of how beauty, of how beauty is, of uh, how success is. So that is a collective consciousness. But it not allow us to live with our own consciousness, which is be ourselves and be beautiful. This is something that um, it's very deep teaching of the Buddha to help us to, to have a collective awakening, collective awareness of how we want to generate the world we are, how we want to change our environment. It doesn't matter how big the issue or complex the issue is, but if we have that volition, it has to be concrete, then we can do it. 
And so Plum Village had become um, a kind of um, refuge for, for many people. When we feel lost, when we feel confused, when we feel despair, and finding an environment, finding an environment where we can collectively voice our concern, um, set the direction for ourselves, and it's also set an example for many other people to see. This is something that is very, very, um, very holy uh, task of, of, um, of creating and upbuilding the environment. So with this um, sharing of the four kinds of nutrients, it helps us to have the, um, a sense of awareness and a sense of urgency of how we can um, nourish ourselves, not only with edible food, but with the kind of spiritual food, with the kinds of um, spiritual support and collective wisdom that we can, we can change our life, we can change society. This is something doable. It's not uh, undoable. <laughs>